Stop me if you've heard this one. Ready? Hi there. Would you like to save 10% on your purchase today and sign up for our in-store credit card? Yeah. <sighs> Chances are, you stop me. What isn't stopping is annoying offers like this one and others sitting in your mailbox right now. Ever wonder why credit card companies are so persistent? Here's why. Last year alone, credit card companies made $175 billion off consumers just like you and me. With the nerve to pose as the good guy, wrapping their offers around huge promises of sign-up bonuses and 0% APR. Psst, for a limited time only. And while it feels like they have our best interest in mind, it's really just the interest itself on their mind. Even for those of us disciplined enough to pay off our balances each month, the ease of use usually results in a much higher rate of spending. But is there a better way? Introducing the Starfish Way, an online rewards platform that's truly for the consumer, even starting, dare we say, a consumer rebellion, one for the good guys like you and me, an opportunity for no interest, no extra spending, and, oh, much higher reward percentages that have many canning their card. Here's how it works. Just open Starfish and simply make a deposit into your Starfish e-wallet. Only the money you've budgeted or plan on spending that month on groceries, gas, restaurants, and other stuff. Then, when you're shopping at one of our merchants, you may have heard of some of them. Amazon, Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Apple, CVS, Kohl's, Best Buy, Lowe's, Nike, yeah, <sighs> Okay, you get the point. There's a ton, almost 500. All you have to do is check out using Starfish either in-store or online. Just find the merchant you're shopping at, enter the checkout total, tap review and pay. Confirm the totals and then tap complete purchase. That's it. Now just tap view your gift card and tap to use. Present this barcode to scan or provide the gift card number and PIN and begin earning instant cash rewards. We like to call them perks, up to 20% perks. Just slightly better than their double rewards 2% credit card with interest. And it works just as simply online by entering the gift card number and PIN during your digital checkout. And as we like to say in the slightly corny voiceover world, there's more, actually a lot more. The Starfish platform was designed to help you earn and learn, meaning, now that you're potentially minimizing your spending and maximizing your rewards, we want to help maximize you and your earning potential. Tap the podcast button for exclusive episodes on financial literacy and success principles taught in a fun, short, and an engaging way. In this sense, Starfish combines the perks that you earn with the wisdom you'll learn for a maximum rate of return. Oh, okay, there's that corny thing. Let's say it this way instead. I love a Starfish app. We've saved over $100 a month just in cash back. We love listening to the Rascal Podcast. Gives me a shot to get what I want out of life. Is it time for you to can the card, earn, and learn with Starfish? When I watch that video, I get so excited because in my mind, what you just saw is a hamburger. And you're like, hamburger? What are you talking about? I mean, imagine if I was Ray Kroc in the years 1955, and I just uh, negotiated and worked out a deal with McDonald's brothers, and I've got this vision to take this McDonald's hamburger that no one's ever heard of around the globe. And I came up here, and in fact, they said that when Ray Kroc would go share his quote plan, he was sharing it in front of four or five people at a time, and they're like, He's crazy. People were telling him no. People at his club, his golf club, were telling him he's crazy. And he was talking about selling millions of hamburgers. Well, he kind of messed it up because he ended up selling, I think the latest number was 200-some billion hamburgers sold. Now, if I were to t have you in 1955, here, taste this hamburger. How many people have ate a McDonald's hamburger and as you were eating it, immediately thought, oh, Billions are going to be sold. How many people think you might have made a better hamburger than, than one you've had as many times, right? Then what was it that made that so successful was he created a system, and that is what an owner does, is he creates a leverageable system, a pipeline. It, what happens to all of us is we're taught growing up, hey, how many people heard this one? If you want to be successful, you got to work hard, go get a good job and get a good education and then get a good job getting paid high dollars with benefits. Well, what they were sold along with all the rest of us was an employee mentality that no matter how much you make, it's one X. It's based upon how many hours you're willing to sell. That's what an employee. 
Ray Kroc, when he saw that hamburger, he wasn't thinking, I will personally serve 100 billion hamburgers. It would have been impossible. What he saw was the vision that I can create a system that works even when I'm not there. J. Paul Getty said it this way, the key to wealth is to learn how to make money while you sleep. And I remember the first time I heard that, I'm like, that sounds great, but how, I mean, I can't sleep at work that much. <laughs> how do you make money while you sleep? The answer is a system. And so if you've learned, all of us get trained to be an employee and there's some great concepts you learn and I'm sure your parents taught you to work hard like my parents taught me to work hard, but it's not leverageable, it's not a system, it's not what they call today a platform. The employee, on the other hand, is, is taught the 45-year plan. This, this data, by the way, has been true since World War II. Right at the end of World War II, they started tracking, the Department of Labor tracks this data, and they track the income over the age. And since World War II, this is the graph. Now, I want you to go back to remember when you were 18 years old. If you were 18 years old and I asked you, please draw out the income versus age graph that you would like for yourself over the next 40 years. How many of you would have drawn that? I mean, how many of you would have said, oh, you know, at first I'd like to get, give me some raises to get my hopes up. But then somewhere around the age of 25 or so, level that right off. And for the next 30 years, I just want to trade time for money to barely keep up with inflation. And then by the time I retire at 65, cut me one half to two thirds because I got a lot of extra time on my hands, so you're gonna have to cut my money. Would anybody draw that out for the future? I, I, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I remember the first time I saw that graph, I was sitting there, Lori and I had just got, uh, we were married and we were pregnant for our first child. And I was looking at that graph and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna go back and talk to my dad because my dad told me to go to GMI. He told me if I went to GMI, I'd be white collar and I'd have it made. I would be an engineer. And so I went back and drew out the 45 year plan to my dad and when I drew out that graph, I told him, I said, dad, this does not seem like a good plan. I just don't think this plan is working for me. And then he looked at me, he just retired, he was 60 years old, just retired from gym, and he looked at me and said, you know what, son? It didn't work for me either. <laughs> now you gotta understand something. To realize that here I am, I listened to something. Now my dad told me the best advice he knew. He was an electrician at GM, and he taught me how to be an engineer. It's the best advice he knew. But it wasn't going to take me where I wanted to go. I wanted more. And I look at what's going on right now. The statistics are stunning to me, what's happening right now. Because, man, when we were 26 years old, we had our own house. We were, uh, Lori was an accountant, I was an engineer. We were excited to start our family and we just didn't have enough money. Now, I'm looking at the statistics today. The millennial generation is aged 26 to 41. Nine million of them in the last nine months have moved back in with their parents. Nine million in the United States of America. Now, don't worry, because there are already nine million millennials living with their parents, so that just brought it up to 18 million American millennials living with their parents, which is one out of four people that are aged 26 to 41 in the United States of America. How many would people say the 45 year plan combined with this inflation and this out of control, you look at what's going on, it's like, I, do you really think that when they were 18 and said, what's your goal when you're 40? To move back in with my parents. What is going on? What I'm saying is the 45-year plan is not the plan if you're looking to create wealth, if you're looking to have a reasonable lifestyle with a little bit of time on the side, is start studying what the Ray Crocs, what the people that are building platforms. There's so many books on this. One of my favorites is called Platform Revolution. 
But if you take a look at it, this is what they do. Let's use Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. Let's use Ray Kroc at his platform of McDonald's. Let's use um, <clears throat> credit cards. Isn't that we saw in Starfish, cutting out the credit cards? Do you realize that in the United States of America, there are a billion plus active credit cards? A billion. There's only 330 million Americans with a billion credit cards. Do you realize the greatest platform business in the world is the credit card banking system? What they have figured out is how to sell this idea of convenience. Isn't a credit card convenient? You walk into a store, they say it's $27. You whip out your card, you flash it, you scan it, you do any number of different ways, and you get your product and you walk out of there and they charge the merchant 3% because you used a credit card. And they'll tell you, but don't worry, we're not charging you, we just charge the, that merchant over there. Well, don't you think the merchants are going to have to jack up the price to cut? Well, that's a lot. So they give you the perks of convenience, and what it draws them for the profit is $75 billion just in the merchants alone. Mark Zuckerberg, he gives you perks of, hey, you get to share a new picture with your friends and profits, billions of dollars in ownership profits go up to a few people at the top. You know what? Do you know what we've done with our bit? Well, you know what Starfish is? It's a platform for the people. Here's what Starfish is proposing. If the biggest platform in the world was created based upon credit cards, based upon the idea of offering convenience to the people for 75 billion upfront charge to the merchants, and an extra 175 billion in expenses for people because out of those billion credit cards, last month, 47% of the credit cards used were not paid in full. When you don't pay your credit card in full, guess what they do? They zing you. And 21% interest, 16.9 is like the low. I mean, it's crazy. So these profits, so here's what we propose. Own your own business. That video that you saw starting out, that's not my business, that's your business. That's our business. In other words, you didn't have to create the platform, you've just got to recognize that if you do not leverage a platform, you will be a 1X the rest of your life. And if that's what you wanna be, I'm not here to argue that you out of that. But if you're like me and Lori, we're like, we didn't, I looked at the people that were building these platforms, like what makes Mark Zuckerberg any different than you? What makes Ray Kroc any different? You know, the only thing is they were willing to think a little differently. And you say, yeah, but I never thought that way before. That's why we gathered together tonight, just to talk, just to start thinking a little bit and saying, if we don't change something, what will ever change? I mean, if we continue to settle like the plan is, laborers, you do all the work, and we will get all the leverage. And I'm like, well, hold on a second. How come our families can't have dreams bigger than 1X? How come we can't go out and do some things a little bit better? And so here's the opportunity. You get to own your own business. The profits come to you. Do you realize that the Starfish platform, what we do is 50% of every dollar that comes into this company gets paid back to the owners. And everybody who becomes an owner, becomes a member, owns their own business. Now, how does that work? Well, we talked about Starfish. Um, <clears throat> let's see if anybody would ever use Starfish. Hmm. Did anybody ever shop at, show of hands, anybody shop at Amazon this month? Okay, or last month. How about Target, Walmart? How about a gas station or grocery stores? Do you realize in the last, in the last two months, we've added 80 stores. We are closing uh, just under 500 stores. Uh, so if it's not on there yet, 
Give it a month, it'll be part of your business. Oh, but what about the pricing, Orrin? Well, we have everything Walmart, Amazon, Target have just at a lower price. Oh, I shouldn't say we, you. You, my friend, have a business where you will never have to apologize for the price again. Isn't that one of the biggest things that every salesman or saleswoman has to deal with? Oh yeah, but your price is higher. No, our price is actually lower. Starting out, that's just for the customer because there's cash back on everything. For $60 a year, the average person in our business last month that used the platform 15 times saved $42. And the total price is $60 a year. That's an 800% return on investment. Let me just do a test here. If you had $100 and I told you that that would have a return of 800% investing in a stock, how many people would figure out a way to invest that 100? Okay, an 800% return is a great return. That's just the tip of the iceberg of your own business. I'm not even here to talk about this. I, that's why I, I love that video, because in the video, I'm like, there's your hamburger. But if I were Ray Kroc, would I seriously spend all the time telling, let me tell you about the sauce. Let me tell you about the pickles. Here, taste another one, and someday I'm gonna have a Big Mac. That's not what I'd be here if I was talking to you about a business. If I was talking to you about a 1,000X, I'd say, Phil, you can have a business that's a billion X. Because what I am proposing is wherever a credit card is used, I say we replace it with Starfish. It's a billion X opportunity in the US alone. Now we don't have to be greedy. Let's just take 10% of it. Would anybody be interested in a 100 million X business? 100 million X, you realize how many radical transformed lives that would be. You don't have to create the platform. You don't have to create the platform, it's already created. You just have to become a student of the business. There are, for every student, true student, hungry student going out and building their own business, there'll be thousands of customers that are just enjoying the benefits of Starfish. And that's great. In other words, I don't want people that want to be customers to be business owners. That's not what we do. I'm doing this meeting tonight because there might be one or two people in here that understand what I'm saying, and that's the person I want to work with. It can grow very fast when you get somebody with the business mindset. I'll give you an example. Back to McDonald's. Do you realize the McDonald's brothers in 19, early 1950s were making $100,000 each? in just three restaurants for McDonald's. And when Ray Kroc ate their hamburger and saw it, he said, you have the most amazing system in the world. This could be worldwide. And you know what they said? We're doing pretty good. Now we wouldn't be interested, we're doing pretty good. The McDonald's brothers are the ones who created that system, but they didn't have the vision to capitalize on it. Ray Kroc did not create the system. He was just smart enough or had enough vision to see where it could go. What Chris Brady, who is a systems engineer and the CEO of uh, Life, and myself as another systems engineer, what we did is we wanted to create a system to give the people a chance to fight back. I think it's ridiculous when one-fourth of the 26 to 41-year-olds have to live in their parents' house and we act like that's okay, like that's the norm? I w isn't this supposed to be the wealthiest country in the world? Is anybody else concerned about this? When I, go, I, I sit there and people are like, well, why don't you just enjoy the things, you know, uh, God's blessed you with, what, why don't you just enjoy it? Because if somebody else is hurting and you have an opportunity to help and you don't help, I think you will be judged for that. Like you will be held responsible. Doesn't it say to whom much is given, much is required? So if we can create a platform, look, this consumer rebellion is, to me, is the biggest deal that I've ever done in my life. Lori and I are more excited about the consumer rebellion than anything we've ever done. Let me explain why. I mentioned earlier, 
Every time, what, they, what the credit cards have figured out how to do is insert themselves into a pipeline into practically every purchase going on. I think the numbers are 77% of all purchases are through credit cards now. 77%. That means cash is used less and less and less. Now watch this. That two to three percent on every transaction is $75 billion. And that's not even their real business. How many people would like a side business at 75 billion? A side business, okay? Here's their real business. Their real business is now they won't say this, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, they're sitting in boardrooms like, can you believe these people? These financially illiterate people for convenience, use our credit card, and we charge the merchants 75 billion, and then we stick it to the people for another 175 billion because they don't pay the credit card off. In fact, they know they've got all the data. They say that if you use a credit card, you end up spending 20% more than if you paid cash. So they love it two ways. They're like, we get 75 billion on our side business and that's just our foot in the door. So that then we can come back and stick it to them some more with a 175 billion hit when they can't pay it. And guess what? I'll hear people say, oh yeah, but Oren, I get 2% cash back if I use that credit card. And do you realize who's paying for that? Do you, if you study the numbers, the bottom 20% never pay their card off. So the, those most in need are hurt the most because people who can pay it off are supporting a system that is abusing them. You're not going to get me to sell out my character to hurt my neighbor. So what am I doing here? I'm saying, am I the only one? Is there anybody else that's concerned? Is there anybody else that would like to profit by being a blessing? Because that's what we're doing. Look at this. Here's what I'm proposing. This is the whole presentation. Everything else is just details. If you get this, you get the whole thing I'm up here for. There is a $75 billion business opportunity, and I'm looking for partners. Is there anybody here that understands that for every time there's a 2 to 3% transaction going on in a credit card, that 2 to 3% could be paid to you, and we'll pay you 100% of it. We'll give you the whole thing if you refer. If you use it, you will get the whole 2 to 3%. It turns into what we call PV in our business. That's just the monetary system, and we pay 4 to 6% PV. In other words, we give you the whole thing. Just stop using the card, and let's start splitting that 7,500 uh, 75 billion into a business, but watch this. Here's the best. For the first time, I love the profession of word of mouth marketing. I love the profession of community building because if you build communities of people and you can teach them so many things. But for the first time in the history of this profession, we've done something that has never been done before. You do not make money off of people in this business. You make money by blessing people in this business. Let me explain. There's a $75 billion business, and what we're proposing is, let's not charge anybody for late fees on credit card. Last year in the United States of America, credit cards charged 19 billion in late fees because somebody didn't pay their bill on time. To give you an idea, the largest community building business in the world is 8.8 .8 billion. So late fees alone are twice as big as the largest community building business that's ever been built. So there's a huge opportunity. The blessing side is, by teaching people to not use credit cards and use Starfish, we'll split 75 billion as business owners. But here's the kicker. Every customer and every member that uses Starfish will never have to pay a late fee for a credit card you didn't use. You will never pay interest on a credit card you didn't use. People are like, yeah, but people will want to use a credit card. Not if they understood the damage it is causing to so many people. You know, the hard thing to do when you start quoting billions is Stalin said it this way. One death is a tragedy. Millions of death is a statistic. 
Those aren't just statistics. Those are life tragedies. Those are divorces happening because people are tired of fighting about money. Those are losing of homes. Those are kids that can't um, continue to go to a private school and get the right values or what, whatever. How many tragedies happen due to lack of money? When Lori and I wanted to have four kids, we decided we can't do it. We're only going to have two. I guarantee you, Lance and Jeremy are really happy that we made a different decision, <laughs> our two youngest, and that Lori could be a stay-at-home mom because we built our business to the point. But we never had this. We never, if you say, well, hold on a sec, you mean to tell me that all of the people in Port St. Lucie and all the different areas of Florida that are using credit cards, that I go teach them to use Starfish, and it's convenient, use Starfish, and that's why I love everybody gets started as a customer at first, because I don't want you to be an owner until you're sold out to be an owner. I just use the Starfish as a customer, try it for yourself. And once you use it, you're like, well, that wasn't that hard. It was a change of a habit. But for 75 billion, would you be willing to change a habit or two? I mean, to me, it's like, I mean, well, it's your dreams, you know, so, and then it's like, and remember that you're making, for every penny you make, you're being an additional $2.20. If, if you make a dollar in the business, that means you bless some family with an extra two twenty-five dollars for a credit card charge that they didn't have to pay. Do you get that? If you get that point, you build a business upon a blessing to your neighbor. And once I understood that, so then I was like, okay. So it really boils down, here's the question. Do you want to be part of the credit community in which 250 billion of our neighbors and our income flows to the credit cards? Or would you like to be part of the cash community, the starfish community, and the 250 billion goes back to the people? Who needs it more? You think the bankers need some more? You think credit cards? MasterCard, 600 some million credit cards alone? The consumer rebellion transfers the pipeline income back to the people. Back to the people. And so, well, well then who actually becomes these owners, Oren? Who, um, people that have some audacity, people that look at a size this and say, do you realize that we could have an open here in six months and fill every single chair. And every single person that fits in these chairs is another family that we're helping set free. Oh, but it was inconvenient, Oren. I had to learn some new things. Haven't you, when you were younger, didn't you have to learn some things to do what you were doing now for a 1X life? I remember I was sitting there I was an engineer, I was going to the number two school for a master's degree, University of Michigan at the time, full ride. GM was paying for the whole thing. That was, I was a high potential guy. And I was looking at Lori, trying to convince Lori why she couldn't leave her job. We needed her accounting salary. She couldn't leave her job and I was trying to convince her of that. And you know what she did? She told the truth. She looked at me and she said, but Orrin, you promised me. And I tried to explain to her, I said, honey, that was called courting. That's before you get married. After you're married, you call that lying. You know, I mean, I, my best intentions, I, I intended that to happen, but with this 1X lifestyle, I can't make enough. And you know, times are tough and I really need your income. And she said, but Orrin, you promised me. And then I saw this. And I thought 100x business would get Lori home. I was not looking to make millions of dollars. I was that, that wasn't even in the cards. I wanted to make 100, I needed $2,000 a month to replace enough of Lori's accounting salary for her to come home. You know what happened? We overshot. <laughs> and so can you. Because once you get the system in place, it keeps working and it keeps working, and it keeps working. You know what the toughest thing is? You gotta knock over the first domino. 
You gotta knock over that first domino and get the process started. And once you get it started, it keeps growing. What is it for you? What are you here for? You didn't come here because you had nothing better to do on a Tuesday night. You didn't get in the car and drive. You didn't go. You came here looking for something. What was it? If it involves time and money, if it involves making a difference, if it involves giving back, maybe you already are very wealthy. Then I would say then take the knowledge and wisdom you have and bless communities of people that desperately need what you know. Time, money. Lori and I have been blessed to travel the world. I'm not saying that look at us. I'm saying look at what you can have. But we've been all over the world. We've tra we've spoke. It's like um, getting an opportunity. I look at some of the highlights is going to a, a Hawaii for 12 consecutive years. All expenses paid. That's one of the things we do in this business is we pay for you to go to Hawaii every single year. And you go out and build a 100x plus business and you start coming and it's like, yeah, I don't know if that, well, the, great, maybe, maybe you have fishing that you'd like to do and you've always wanted to go fishing first class. You know what the, my big dream building on fishing was when I was an engineer? Saturday morning, watching other people catch tarpon on TV. But then being able to go out and catch an eight foot three inch sailfish. Man, I say, if I never caught another fish in my life, I'm like, my life is complete after an hour fighting that eight foot three inch sailfish that goes 65 miles an hour in the water. Highly encourage that if you like fishing. I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you this, if it involves any of these, time, money, freedom. I was thinking of going through this morning trying to remember how many times, and I'm thinking, I think I'm averaging 1% of my life for the last 20 years has, has been awaking to a, an alarm clock. 99% of the time, wake up naturally. I don't know, that might not be important to some people, but it is to me. Now, that doesn't mean I don't get up early. I like waking up early. I, get, I, I wake up when I wake up, but I just think this is very important. You should wake up when your eyes open, not some alarm. I mean, think about what an alarm is. That's, I mean, this doesn't even sound, what's it so alarming about an alarm? You know, it's like, well, I, it's like, I don't get it. It's like, but that's, we're so accustomed to that, that no, you gotta be told when to get up. You gotta be told, it's all regimented because it's all 1X thinking. And you gotta get out of that. You can get out of that families, charities. How would you like to be able to have the money when they ask for something? You can just sit there and say, I'll tell you what. And I like, uh, my general rule is I don't give 100% to anything, but what I'll do is say, I'll tell you what, I'll match half. I'll match half, Lori and I will match half, and if they can do that. See what money can do? Money is not everything at all. It's just a tool. It's just a tool, but you know what? When you don't have that tool, life becomes a lot harder. What I love about what we do is we do it as a team. I talked about building these pipelines. We don't expect you when you're first getting started to know what you're doing. We're gonna work as a team. We're gonna help you. Like in other words, we're gonna go out and get starfish customers. You're gonna go out and get starfish customers. And then we're gonna do a meeting like this and we'll find the ones that say, I don't wanna just be a customer. I wanna be part of that consumer rebellion. And then when they join up, guess what? Our customers join your team. Your customers join your new person's team. We build it together. Together, everyone achieves more. You're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And you know what that does? It starts, you're adding people. Frank and Beth add you, you add Bobby. And then all of a sudden, you're like, yeah, but who's Tina? Who's Tina? I, I don't know Tina. Yeah, but so-and-so knew Tina and added them to your team. We're building to 10X together. So you're like, but I don't know anybody. I'm not sure of this. Hey, sometimes, sometimes in life, you're gonna have to take a leap. I mean, if you go ask somebody at 70 years old, 80 years old, on their deathbed, 
And they do this, they do study after study. You know what the number one answer is? The biggest regret. I wish I would have taken more chances. Why is everybody playing it safe all the time? We played it safely, you're dying anyway. No one's getting out alive. The question is, what did you do with your time? What I, so, what I love about what we have now is we've identified the biggest problem going on in people's lives. One of the biggest f problems financially is these credit cards. And we have a solution that all we have to do is raise up a group of Robin Hoods. We have to raise up a group of people that say, I wouldn't mind profiting by being a blessing to others. And we raise up a team of those type of Robin Hoods that go into communities and teach those communities how to set themselves free from the people who are teach. oh yeah, your credit rating's good, here, we'll give you another credit card. So you can stack up even more debt. Instead, we're building teams of people, and we don't expect people just to join the team and all of a sudden know everything about financial literacy. This is just like life. I mentioned wrestling earlier. When I first started wrestling, I didn't know any move. I would go in there and people were twisting me in positions and pretzel moves that I've never seen, and it hurt. And I had two choices, I could quit. Quitting is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. It's a, quitting is a permanent destruction. Change. Change. By having a team approach, when you're no good, we're good. When you're getting started, you have other people that have already got started that are learning, that are helping you build your team. And that moves you up the chart. This first level apprentice, every seminar that we do, we recognize apprentice. Apprentice levels, man, you get four people in your first team that are growing, two people in your second team, and you make 380 a month. And you're like, 380 a month? I make way more than that on my job. Of course you do, because you're just getting started. Can you imagine your first day, your first month of class as a freshman? How much did you make your first month of class as a freshman? You didn't go, I, I only made 380 bucks, I quit. No, you probably paid 380 bucks that day for that class, right? Then you can go leader level. This is when you start really building teams. 20 people attending opens like this in one team, 10 people in a second team. This is the leader level, that's a $2,000 a month income. What changes in your life with just even 2,000? Now I know some of you are like, no, I make way more than that. Let me ask you this though. When's the last time you got a $2,000 a month raise? You start figuring it out, 2,000 a month, that goes a long way, because I remember when we hit 2,000 a month and Lori came home and started raising the kids, then we said, we're not just having two, we're gonna go ahead and have four like we originally intended. But guess what? When you go leader, you think somebody on your team says, hey, I wanna know what you did. Tell me how you did that. And the next thing you know, they start going leader, and that's when you hit that 1,000x. Can you imagine when you have 1,000 people that are using Starfish? Here's the blessing to them. By using Starfish, they're no longer using credit cards, and we know the blessing to them. What's the blessing to you? 1,000x business? You start, I mean, you start making the type of income that anytime somebody needs help, you, they know who they're coming to because you've been blessed by being a blessing. To join the Consumer Rebellion, it's three steps. The first thing is, if, you have never, if, you if you're not on Starfish, get on Starfish and use it. Here's what I love about our business. Do it. Use the product. You, you'll be, when you use it, you're like, that was it? That was simple. So all I do is load up cash and cut out the credit cards, shopping at all the places. I mean, the logic of the business is you're shopping at all these stores anyway. Just shop through your own business so that you can get paid and not the credit cards. All we're doing is flipping a pipeline from here to here, and it's flowing into your house versus flowing out of your house. So become a Starfish customer. 
For those that say, uh, I'm already a customer, I'm ready to become a business owner. I wanna become a business owner. I wanna build the business to at least 100X and maybe more. Then I'm gonna tell you three things that every entrepreneur, and I'm gonna, Lori and I will cover more of this in the second half. But there's three things every entrepreneur does. They master literacy, financial literacy. They master leadership and they master the leveraging of systems. Those are the three, every great entrepreneur knows, literacy, leadership, and leverage. And so the step two is the life accelerator is Chris Brady and myself, and we teach through literacy, leadership, and leverage. You can get on there and there's video after video after video teaching what you're going to need to think, how to think, if you want to be an entrepreneur. If you're like, nah, I don't want to do that, I just want to use and save some money, great, just do the starfish. If you would want to be a business owner, become get on the Life Accelerator, that's an extra $95, but guess what? Then when you become a member, we waive the $60 registration fee. So really, the Life Accelerator, for all practical purposes, $35. And if you understand Chris Brady, Chris Brady wrote a New York Times number one bestseller, it was number one in the whole country for several weeks called Launching a Leadership Revolution. And we teach through those principles in, that, in the Life Accelerator. So then you become a platform owner, you get your spot, and we start building that team together. The next steps, for those who saw a business, what I would encourage you is start plugging in. Like from here down, we're all worth minimum wage. The only thing that separates when it comes to making money is the way you think about it. And if you're going to think the way, the, uh, in any field, if you want to be the best at it, find the people that are the best, learn what they're doing, do what they're doing, and then begin to teach it. Learn, do, teach. So book a time to get back with the person that brought you. There's a seminar this coming up this weekend, and then you can get started and we'll start helping to all the different groups here. I'll help you get started. I'm gonna do, the best thing I can do is turn you over to Lori Woodward and have her share. That, what I appreciate so much, when we first got started, Lori thought, at first, she thought I was crazy. And she said, man, I think it's crazy, but if you really think that I could be a stay-at-home mom, okay, I'll support you. So at first, it was kind of, my business and she was supporting. Then when we hit about 100X, we became perfect partners. We were working together. And since it's been 1,000X, it's Lori's business and I get the privilege to work with her. <laughs> and I am so honored to, I love her so much. Here's Lori Woodward. All right, well, thank you. Um, I hope that you guys heard and saw what a great opportunity this is. It's been a joy watching Orrin up here, and uh, it's been a journey for us, and that's a story for a whole nother time. Um, but just to know where we started watching him, he would call himself a no people skills engineer. Um, I'll tell you what, you just saw somebody, though, who went through a process of reading, listening, and associating, and he has very much got a lot of people skills. I mean, when we first got married, I, I couldn't believe you could be married and happy at the same time. It just wasn't in my, I just couldn't believe it. And we weren't for 11 years. But <laughs> now I look at him and I'm like, that is my best friend and we get to do this together. We do this together. So um, I hope you got to see the opportunity that uh, he presented. I hope you see the potential in it. And um, the greatest thing is, you know, he talked about that dream circle. I, I love that circle up there, you know, time, money, all that stuff. Um, and that stuff is great, but it's just stuff. What I love about this is the community that it builds, the relationships that it builds, the relationship between Orrin and I. Um, and, you know, he talked about Paul and Sandy, and he, and he mentioned uh, Josh and Tara, and, you know, just growing together and, and um, surrounding yourself with like-minded people to help you grow as a person. To me, that's what I love of, of this business. Yes, we have a home here and a home in Michigan, and that material stuff is stuff. It's all great, whatever. But to me, it's the people that, you know, you get to meet along the way, that you get to help grow and change, and you grow up together. And so um, this is just a phenomenal opportunity. 
I, I love where we started. I love the journey that we've been on. I love where we are, and I love mostly where we're going. And I look at this room, and I think, man, I hope, I hope these people have or see the opportunity, and I hope that they get the hope that Orrin and I had. And it's just great. We're so excited you're here. If you're ready to jump on board, stick around and listen to Orrin. He's going to go into more details. Um, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back here. So welcome. <laughs> 